Here's a question to consider this morning. Could the key to a more satisfying sex life for women all be in your head? Now that we've got your attention this morning, we're going to take a look at women's sexual health, specifically through the lens of mindfulness. Lori Brado is a sex researcher and psychologist who is funneling 15 years of research into the pages of this book. It is called Better Sex Through Mindfulness. And Lori Brado is with us in studio this morning. Good to have you here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. If the idea at its most base, basic level for mindfulness is focus and yeah. paying attention, mm -hmm. how does that translate into sexual intimacy? So we know that, first of all, um, upwards of 40% of women do experience sexual concerns. And for a lot of those women, psychological factors like depression and anxiety and, frankly, stress contribute quite a bit. And many women will describe that during sexual activity, their minds are elsewhere. They're either worrying about the outcome or they might be thinking about benign events like what to have for dinner, what's happening tomorrow. And so the idea of mindfulness about paying attention in the present moment and doing so in a non-judgmental way means that women are actually there. They're paying attention to sensations. And so those important signals that go from the body back up to the brain get captured so that the brain can continue to tell the body to respond. So it's quite an important tool. We've trained ourselves and, in fact, take pride on the fact that women are known to be good multitaskers. And now we have, you know, our phones that also help with all of those distractions. So take us through, uh, in the example that you give in the book, which I love, is about paying attention to how we eat. Yeah. How does how, how we eat a raisin translate into better sex. Right. So in our groups that we run with women, we often do start with a, an eating meditation using the raisin. And we guide women over the course of about 10 minutes to pay attention to the raisin, take a look at what it looks like, the colors, the shapes, the sounds when you hold it into your ear, when you put it into your mouth. And what, it, um, what women experience is that they notice when they pay attention that suddenly colors are more vivid, sounds are more vivid, sensations in their body are more vivid. And without us even drawing that connection between the raisin and sex, they immediately appreciate that, that these skills can be directly translated to sexuality so that when they start to really pay attention during the sexual encounter, they notice things for the first time that they haven't. What is it about women and about our makeup from a psychology perspective that makes them say, you know, I, it's, it's selfish to think too much about myself? We do that in so many areas of our lives, this one included. Right. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite a, an endemic problem that women tend to be more hard on themselves than men do. I think we also have created a culture where we pride ourselves on multitasking. And yet multitasking can be very, very dangerous when it comes to uh, sexuality. It can be dangerous also for having a conversation where we might miss nuance, we might miss important connection. So um, to, uh, to take this time to pay attention is not an act of selfishness. It's rather an act of really uh, noticing that this is something quite important that you can do for yourself and if you're in a relationship for the partner as well. One of the other things your book does is talk about the fact that women can tend to have a lower sex drive and your aim is to try and take some of the shame and stigma out of that by bringing it out into the open. Why do you think this is something we don't talk about? Or women, you know, fake it so to speak by, you know, hyping up their sex drive when they're talking about it. Yeah, it's quite paradoxical because we somewhat argue we live in quite a sex-saturated society, mm. and yet sexual problems are quite high in women. And when we look at the data over time, they actually tend to be increasing than they were, say, 20 or 40 years ago. And yet the vast majority of women will not talk to a healthcare provider about their concerns. Shame they feel bad. They feel bad. They, uh, they experience shame and embarrassment. Um, and because they don't sort of check out these concerns with other people, they assume that everyone around them is having a fantastic sex life, uh, and yet they're quite abnormal. Uh, so women are much more likely to go online or s seek, concern seek uh, answers on the internet than mm -hmm. they are to even talk to their close friends or family providers about this. What's your advice if someone comes to you and says, Dr. Brado, look, I'm like juggling kids, a full-time career, I have all these expectations, I'm taking care of parents. Now you're also asking me to stop thinking about all of those things and just think about sex. I, how do I do that? Right. So, you know, mindfulness is, is not about emptying the mind or stopping to, you know, stop the other tasks or obligations that we have, but rather as a way of being, it's how can we take that present moment focus in a compassionate way to everything that we do so that while you're tending to kids you're fully present while you're buying groceries you're fully present and can we nurture that skill so that when it comes time to sexual intimacy we also have the ability to be right there and nowhere else all right buy a pack of raisins practice on the weekend <laughs> <laughs> you got it dr Brado, thanks for being here today thanks so much